This has been quite a weekend when it comes to conversations about writers, about voice, about culture, and who tells stories in this country. An op-ed in Write, which is a quarterly published by the Writers' Union of Canada, has ignited a firestorm of controversy over cultural appropriation. Hal Nizvecki is the, uh, was the editor of that publication. He wrote that he didn't believe in cultural appropriation in an issue that was dedicated to Indigenous writing. He said, and this is a quotation, In my opinion, anyone, anywhere, should be encouraged to imagine other peoples, other cultures, other identities. I'd go as far as to say there should be an award for doing so. The Appropriation Prize for the best book by an author who writes about people who aren't even remotely like him or her. The op-ed triggered criticism from many people. Nizvecki resigned his position as editor. On Twitter, a number of prominent media executives, including the CBC, Steve Laterante, began offering up money and support for a so-called appropriation prize. Many of them, including Steve, have since apologized for what they said on Twitter. The resignation of Hal Nizvecki prompted Jonathan Kay, editor-in-chief of The Walrus, to post on Twitter saying, The mobbing of Hal Nizvecki is what we get when we let identity politics fundamentalists run riot. Sad and shameful. On Saturday, Jonathan Kay explained why he came to Nezvecki's defense in an interview on CBC News Network. What I objected to was the way it treated the outgoing editor as if he had said something that was akin to sort of neo-Nazi propaganda. Personally, I actually didn't like the column he wrote. I thought it was too flippant about a serious subject. And it is true that it was insulting, <clears throat> given that the issue itself was about Indigenous writers. It was insulting to write that kind of flip column as an editor's note, and I acknowledge as much as my National Post article today. I just didn't think it was right to treat him as a sort of hate criminal for defending the idea of universalism in writing. It's Jonathan Kay in an interview on Saturday on CBC News Network. Later in the day, he resigned as editor-in-chief of The Walrus and noted there were other reasons involved in that decision, reasons that if you uh, follow some of the uh, coverage, uh, involve uh, matters of free speech and more. Jesse Wente was part of that discussion on News Network this weekend, and he is with me now to talk further about what's happened over the last few days, the issue of cultural appropriation, the media, representation, and where we go from here. Good morning. Good morning, Matt. What have the last few days been like for you? Um, mostly unpleasant, I would say, uh, and a challenge. But before, you know, before we get to that, I want to read some names that I think are, are important here and may have been lost since this started last week, so please allow me this moment. Joshua Whitehead, Richard Van Camp, Tanya Roach, Louise Bernice Half, Elaine Wagner, Gord Grissenthwaite, Alicia Elliott, Shannon Webb Campbell, Helen Knott, and Gloria Melman. These, Matt, are the names of the writers who appeared in that issue of Write Magazine that has caused all of this. They're, they were the ones that protested first to the editorial and started this, and yet we have since moved on for a number of reasons uh, that we can, we can get to in our remaining time. But I want to make sure that everyone seeks out these names to read. There are many other names that are commenting on this issue. There are many other lists of names out there, but those are inconsequential. This is the list that matters. These are the people that should be centered and heard in this issue. And that is one of the great lessons for everyone in all of this, is that um, the voices that we have centered for far too long in this country, perhaps we should re-examine that, especially if we want to recreate what this nation is together, not divisively. But what we are instead is divided, largely, largely by rhetorical arguments mm. that conflate notions of free speech with cultural appropriation while disguising the, the very distinct histories of these two things. We have to understand that, that cultural appropriation is institutionalized. It is the very foundation of what Canada is built on, and not just cultural appropriation, but appropriation of all things indigenous, our lives, our land. This is what this nation is founded on. It was policy of the government to do this. To ignore, to pretend now that we, this is, that we are no longer in the residential schools, that sometime we have moved on beyond this, and that somehow we're now on equal footing and thus we can all share equitably, is to fail in your responsibility as a storyteller. See, this is the thing with, with a cultural appropriation. None of us, I, I, not that I've seen, yeah. want to limit free speech. That, I wish there were so many more stories written about Indigenous people, but those stories come with responsibility. Indigenous people know this 
all too well. We are beholden to our communities. When we say these things, we know exactly who will hold us responsible. Who is that for non-Indigenous writers when they don't have these connections to the community? And who do they truly understand the, the reason that these stories are sacred? The, the biggest challenge coming out of this, Matt, for the Canadian media is going to be how you reapproach the Indigenous community what after did, this. What did what happened? I mean, there's the op-ed, the editorial that that's sure. written, there's, there's support that's given uh, to that, there's pieces that are written, and then this thing happens on Twitter uh, in the dead of night where a, a number of media executives, of including one from here at CBC, yeah. uh, talk about the idea of a cultural appropriation prize and throwing their support behind a cultural appropriation prize. What did that tell you about what you just said is important, that, that, that idea of, of re-examining voice, who tells stories, what the stories are, uh, and how the stories are approached? It tells me that the establishment of the Canadian media is ill-equipped to actually do that. Because do they have the people capable of that sort of self-examination? You know, when you tweet at midnight uh, like that, it displays a remarkable arrogance. It displays how much you truly value our voices. Because you, you don't think we can see you? It, it means they didn't care, Matt, that they, we could see them. It didn't matter to them. Now there's all this scrambling. There's all this apology. I was going to say, tweets have been followed by apologies. Be, be, of course. And, and listen, it's appreciated. Words are great. But we need actions. This, th these things can't happen again. This absorbs so much energy. It causes so much pain in our communities to have to re-argue for our value as human beings in our, on our own land, Matt, in a foreign language, as I do to you now, one that imposed on us? Please, what are we talking about in 2017? I'm sorry, Matt. One of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you was because you've been front and center in this. One of the reasons why I was concerned about talking to you is because this is so emotional and this is so difficult for you. What will, what will prove to you that people are taking this seriously finally? Um, I'm not sure at this point. You know, I've spent a long time working in large cultural institutions like the one we sit in today, yeah. hoping and working to see fundamental change in them, that we needed to change their very nature for them to understand themselves to, in order to move forward. These moments make me question whether that work is achievable. And I think that's really difficult um, because it means that we will have to build it ourselves, and we will. Uh, you know, If anything, this proves our strength as a community and our endurance. And don't mistake my um, emotion here or my civility anywhere as weakness. This is our strength. This is me being in touch with my ancestors and feeling them sitting beside me. I hope to never do this again, Matt. Thank you. Jesse Wente, he's here every week on Metro Morning.